Hello everyone, welcome to Ovesen.net. Uh, today it's uh, another one of uh, those short videos, so uh, I'll get right to it. This is in fact a little cartridge for uh, the Commodore 64 and I love uh, these kinds of kits where you can uh, actually build something. And today I'm gonna build this uh, Kung Fu flash cartridge for the Commodore 64. And uh, uh, the board itself is already populated with uh, the most important uh, chip, is an ARM chip. This is in fact an uh, ST32F405 chip and um, it's an ARM and I think uh, ARM is uh, going to take over the world pretty soon. So ARM is a British company, it comes from uh, back in the 80s uh, where you got uh, the RISC architecture and computers like the Archimedes and uh, no, even Apple has uh, uh, started its transition over from uh, Intel or x86 and um, over to ARM. I actually got this kit from a viewer. He donated it to me and my channel, uh, but he don't want his name in the video, so I just say thank you. <laughs> and he even sent me this uh, very nice 3D printed uh, cartridge case, uh, even though I said I could print it myself, but uh, that's excellent. So what remains uh, now is to solder in some of the parts that uh, are not uh, on this board and like this uh, uh, flash card uh, reader, SD card reader. So what is uh, the Kung Fu flash cartridge? Uh, well, it's uh, this one here. Um, uh, you can go to this uh, GitHub page and find uh, more information about it. It is a so-called uh, software-defined uh, cartridge where uh, the hardware of the, the cartridge is emulated uh, by a fast microcontroller, which in this case is an ARM processor, in fact. And it is designed by a Danish guy called Kim Jørgensen, and uh, this is his GitHub page, and uh, he has open-sourced uh, the whole thing and uh, here's an example of uh, how the menu is when you uh, press the menu button on the cartridge so the thing is you use a micro uh, sd card and you uh, copy uh, commodore 64 images onto that uh, sd card games and other types of cartridge files like uh, yeah in this example here's simon's basic and uh, you can also uh, uh, copy over uh, other CRT files like uh, freeze cartridge uh, images and things like that. There's also a link to a 3D model uh, if you want to print the cartridge case and uh, all the Gerber files and BOM file can be found here as well. And here's a list of uh, which types of uh, cartridges are supported. So you can see normal game cartridges, actual play cartridge, uh, Epix fast load, Super Saxon, which is a special kind of uh, cartridge. And here's the supported file types, CRT, disk images, and uh, PRG files. So the firmware can also be updated by uh, just adding a new firmware version uh, onto the uh, SD card and uh, Here's a link to the latest firmware. So this is actually a great uh, cartridge and if you want to get one yourself, I have seen there are several sellers that sells this uh, complete, uh, no need for building it like I'm doing. And the latest firmware is from August this year and uh, I just downloaded the, the latest one now. I'm gonna uh, update the firmware on uh, my cartridge if it is necessary. I don't know what version is uh, on that chip now. All right, so this should be a fairly easy job. Um, there's only three buttons and uh, this card reader. And this is maybe the most difficult part because it's uh, very small pins on this one. And uh, 
yeah, SMD. And these are the three D printed uh, buttons for, uh, yeah, for the case. Nice. One white and uh, two blacks. Okay, let's start uh, soldering. But uh, before that, I'm gonna clean the, the PCB. At least the uh, contacts I'm gonna solder, and of course clean the soldering iron tip. So I'm gonna start with the most difficult part, uh, the card reader, and it should be soldered down to those four uh, anchor points, and then there are uh, like eight pins. So I put on a lot of flux. So it really doesn't help that I'm a little bit uh, <laughs> shaky on my hands, but uh, I'll manage. So now I think it is in the correct position, so I'm gonna start by uh, just tacking uh, one of the corners. So now it's stuck there and uh, I can solder the rest. And I'm actually using 0.5 millimeter uh, solder tin that uh, is uh, very good for this SMD part. Final corner. No, the most difficult part are the pins. Let me just try and solder them one by one. I think that went smooth. So hopefully now all the pins are uh, in good connection with the solder pad. Yeah, that looks to be good. And I did not melt the plastic inside. <laughs> so now comes the little uh, switches. Yeah, these stay in place by themselves, so uh, no worries there. A little bit of flux on these legs. All right, uh, that went smooth. Just need to cut off a little bit of these uh, switches legs. A little long. All right, great. Now it's just a matter of cleaning a bit and then time to test. So now I can assemble the, the cartridge and uh, yeah. It seems to fit very well. I forgot to mention, but uh, this chip is uh, already programmed, and uh, as you can see, uh, there are some some I/O ports here that can can be used for uh, for programming it. Uh, I'm not going to do that now. And there seems to be uh, room for a USB connector there, so um, I think that's also for uh, the programming part. But when in the Commodore, this one uh, actually uses the 5 volt uh, from the Commodore. Just a little cleaning before I uh, put uh, the label onto the case. All right. There you go, and here we see what the, the buttons do. They are reset, a menu, and a special one. 
All right, I have formatted a 64 gigabyte uh, SD card and I have copied uh, some uh, games. Also, the firmware update file is now on the SD card. All right, so now it's time to test the thing and see uh, how it performs. All right, time to test the cartridge. Okay, yeah, it seems to at least uh, work, but uh, it did not recognize uh, the SD card. And I think that is because I formatted as uh, XFAT, because uh, maybe it's a little too big uh, SD card to be formatted as uh, FAT, but uh, I'm gonna reformat it now and make a smaller partition. So now I have formatted in uh, FAT32 and uh, I made a 16 gigabyte partition all right yeah that works so this seemed to have a version 113 but I added the update file for version 114 so let's see if we can just update it by selecting that file yeah this will upgrade the firmware all right <laughs> that was quick so now you can select in the menu. I connected a joystick and uh, you can use that as well to select. So let's try the Super Saxon, which is a special cartridge. So that did not work. Kind of disappointing, but uh, uh, maybe it's not the correct uh, CRT file. It's uh, in the information. It says uh, that it would support Super Saxon. All right, let's try another game then. Uridium. So this is uh, actually a floppy disk image, a D64 file. And uh, yeah, that is actually presented as a directory. So it seems like it's trying to load from a <laughs> device not present. So that doesn't uh, look good. Let me try this uh, Epix Games CRT. So this is actually a Easy Flash uh, cartridge image, and uh, yeah, and it has uh, some of the games from Epix Summer Games. All right, there you go, something that works. <laughs> So I don't know why it won't load from um, uh, floppy, but uh, maybe it's because uh, this machine has a Jiffy DOS. Uh, so I have set up another machine. This is a Breadbin version of the Commodore 64 without the Jiffy DOS. So let's test. All right, here we are in the menu again. Another machine. Let's try this Ghosts and Goblin. All right, that seems to work. So. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's not compatible with the Jiffy DOS, obviously. And the loading is extremely fast. Oh, this is a cool game. So now uh, <laughs> the Super Saxon also works. So uh, maybe there is something wrong with the other machine, or maybe it's because of the Jiffy DOS. <laughs> All right, I managed to crash immediately. All right, let's try one more game, Uridium. amazing speed on that loading this is an excellent game i played it a lot uh, back in the day all 
All right, that was it for this video. Uh, amazing uh, cartridge and uh, yeah, Kung Fu Flash. I really enjoyed this and uh, makes it uh, very easy and quick to test out uh, different games and uh, utilities. So it's really good that we have guys like uh, Kim Jorgensen that uh, actually develops and uh, designs these kinds of solutions. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, see you in the next video. Bye bye.